Heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Okay, guys, we are in for more rain in North Texas, and I just want to share with you how I'm clearing out the these tomatoes. See, if you don't get them, you see that yellow right up in there? It'll go all the way up to your tomatoes, and you won't get nothing. So, I am letting air flow through here, and I removed all of this decaying matter. Okay? If you have a lot of rain, remove your yellowing. Limbs. Okay, guys, I went in the house, took a break, came back, and decided to take any more off. Now, any leaf that you see from here is on the other side of the garden bed. Okay? Might be a few in there I can still get, but I can't reach them. But, uh, yeah. So, take those leaves off. If you don't, it's going to travel all the way up your plant. This is not blight, tomato blight. This is too much rain. You need to get that air flowing in there because the ground is really damp. Also, if you have a lot of mulch, move it out the way. You don't want any moisture being held on to. Move that mulch out the way. Push it to the side. I'm pushing it over here with the society garlic because it's more uh, tolerant of rain and overwatering. Okay, guys, now that I have cleaned up that garden bed and um, all around the bottom remove the yellowing leaves i'm gonna go take section by section and i'm getting ready to go to war let me show you what i have i'm getting ready to fight the effects of the rain <laughs> after i remove the leaf mulch around those plants so that it can get some air i let it get some air for a couple hours okay now i'm getting ready to pick up some of these items that I have on hand and I'm going to uh, make Lady Cheryl's moisture defense. I'm going to war. I'm going to add some nutrients, a little bit of organic fertilizer to the uh, plants around the base so that when the rain starts again, I will be ready. And what I'm going to share with you is upside down here, I have worm castings. I've got some black cow manure. I have some Vigoro potting mix. I have some azomite rock dust. I have this on this little, little dolly that I have because it's very heavy. And in here, I have garden lime. Over here, I found this on sale, insecticidal soap for organic gardening. Uh, but when I use it, I add neem oil to it. But uh, just in case I see some critters around the bottom of the base of the pl uh, tomato plants, I'm going to put some of that there. If I see any fungus, I have my cinnamon, which is good for fungus. And remember, I'm not going to water anything. When you have excessive amounts of rain, you can easily get a fungus, a blight, or you can have blossom in rot. Okay, you've all seen it. It looks like a decaying at the bottom of your uh, tomatoes and it can occur on, even on the sides of a pepper plant. So when you have inconsistent watering, over watering, you need to do something to try to even it out. And that's what I'm going to do. Another thing is when you have an excessive amount of rain and you have raised garden beds, okay, like I have here. And I have two in the greenhouse. What happens is those nutrients, that that rain compounds it and it goes down into the earth. So you have to add more uh, amendments to your soil to keep it healthy so that it can fight off root rot. So that's why I'm adding some worm castings. Again, black cow, just a little bit of potty mix. A lot of azomite rock dust because it has 92 minerals. So it's going to beef up everything and try to handle uh, the uh, real moisture content in the soil. And then, of course, I told you right here, I have some garden lime. Calcium is the number one thing you need to apply to prevent blossom in rot. Now, usually, I just put some in there when I'm starting my plants. And then as the... Months go by, I might add a little bit of calcium. 
the desperate times calls for desperate measures. So I'm going to mix this up, all of it up together in this little container. And then I'm going to go back over to that garden bed over there and show you how I'm going to apply all of these soil amendments, okay? I'm those sweet potatoes looking good, okay? <laughs> okay, so since I... I uh, did this this morning. The plants are still looking good. Blooms are hanging on. The ground is drying up. It was more moist this morning. Here is my mixture. I put, now look, it's no magic formula about how much you should add because you can't go wrong with whatever amount you add. It's not going to burn your plants. It's not going to uh, hurt them. You can add as much rock dust as you want, cow manure, potting mix, worm casting. It cannot burn or slow down the growth of your plants. The more you add, the better. And since I have an abundance of rock dust, I added more rock dust than, every, than anything, and I just mixed it up all together. But if you're one of those people that are new to gardening and you need to have specifics, I would say for every cup of worm castings, a cup of potty mix, every cup of calcium, add two cups of rock dust. Okay? So everything, one cup, two cups of rock dust. So I don't see any mold or mildew, so I don't need the cinnamon here. Uh, I did spray because I saw a few little white flies around. And uh, now I'm just going to go as far as I can. Let me see if you can see that. And I'm just going to take this shovel, heaping shovel full. So I'm going around the perimeter of the plant each tomato plant i put four little scoops let's get the wood chips out the way we don't need that and then we're just going to level it out just around the tomato plants that's it people it's not hard you can do it grow your own eat your own it's not hard some people try to make it like it's rock get science but it's not. It's very easy. Since I took big heaping shovelfuls here, I only needed three. I'm going to spread that out like that. That's it. I don't have to film all of this. You all got it. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to get those leaves, those yellow leaves. I'm going to finish adding some soil amendments to this bed. And this bed is not over... Lee Crowley, let me share this with you. I only have eight plants in this four by eight bed. One, two, three, four tomato plants, and the same thing is on the opposite side. Next year, I'm putting in my notes, I'm only gonna plant six. It'll be three going down the uh, length, and three going down on the other side. Every year, your gardening should improve. Keep a journal. See what you can improve. Because I used to put 12 plants in this bed and grew them successfully. Didn't have a problem unless we had excessive rainy weather. Okay? All right. I'll be back. Another thing I want to share with you, you see that little label down there? That's a BW for brandy wine. It has a potato leaf. You notice it? It's shaped a little bit different. It's not yellow, that's the sun. Shaped a little bit like potatoes. Look at this plant real good. This plant doesn't have too much yellowing. I see a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can get it. About right here and right here. This is all I had to take off of this plant. So what does that tell me? The brandy wine can handle the rainy conditions better than some of the other varieties. It's a little yellowing right here. I'm just going to pinch it off. But you see flowers. You see flowers. Okay? Flowers up. I think I saw flowers there. But the point I'm making is it can handle the moisture. Right? But it can only handle it for so long. So I'm still going to do the same thing. There's some more flowers. Here's one that died. And that's actually a sucker. So I'll take it off. I'll take this off. 
I don't prune all the suckers necessarily. It just depends on how many uh, plants I have. Okay? So, something that's yellow, but it's not yellow. That's the sun. See that? Now, just add some soil amendments at the bottom of here. And move on all the way down the line. Okay. Okay, here's another tip. I'm going to go in closer so that you can see my peach tree is suffering. See those yellow leaves? It's getting too much water. It's getting too much water. So we have to really come in here and rescue this peach tree. Actually, this is a nectarine. And these are, this one and the one behind it are peach trees. You see those yellow leaves? Yellow, uh soft leaves that's why i have them growing let's go back out that's why i have them growing in a raised garden bed because they can't handle wet feet they can't handle it so i'm gonna mix those same soil amendments because it has dropped i think bria told you in the last video 25 pieces of fruit i trimmed off anything that looked bad that looked like it was just decaying and you can see it right over here i trimmed that off and now I'm going to mix those soil amendments and I'm going to add them right here. Go all the way around your garden. Look at your fruit trees. Any of them that seem like they need some nutrients, mix the same mixture up that I just shared with you. Feed it to your fruit trees. Trust me, it's going to help them. Look at these trees. Wow. I've only had them three years. And two of them are dwarfs. I have three in one raised bed. And the reason I put them in a raised bed is because peach trees do not like wet feet. They can't handle the rain. I've killed some peach fruit trees by planting them in the ground and they were just swimming in water. So when I dug them up, I noticed all that water. I called Stark Brothers. They assisted me over the phone and recommended that I put them in a raised garden bed. And it has been very successful because what I didn't show you just now is another garden bed directly behind the peach trees. I have two cherry trees because they don't like wet feet either. I know because I killed one in the ground with too much water. Did you see all of the yellow leaves on this peach tree? Yeah, it's been getting too much water. I haven't watered it, guys, since April. April, May, June, where I live in Mesquite, Texas, we get too much rain. Here's another tip. Just because you've gotten a lot of rain, you still have to remember to water your containers. I'm going to zoom in closer to let you see all of the decaying leaves right here. I stuck my finger down in there. That soil was dry. It rained yesterday. But they're hanging high and they have good drainage. So you can see water. Probably you can see it dripping from the bottom of there because I just watered it. And I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And then I'm going to water these two. This hanging basket and this hanging basket. So in this tip, even though you have a lot of rain, you must still water your containers. Okay? All right. So I have some rain water here. I'm just going to go in the center. And I've already watered this one. One thing I've learned about petunias is keep removing the spent flowers. It'll make it keep blooming. The more you pull the bad ones off, the more you will get new flowers. Okay? Same thing with your marigolds. Take them bad boys off. Because these flowers, the marigolds, will last you until it gets 32 degrees. They'll be good. When everything else is dying out except Marigold, Xenias, and uh, 
begonias, you're going to be glad that you took care of them so that you can still have beauty in your garden. Okay. Okay, guys, this is your last tip in this series. Check your containers. If you see that you have a saucer up under it that you use, you know, during the drought, remove the saucers, lean your plant back, just like that, and drain it. Okay? All of those containers over there, I already did it. I took all the saucers off. Well, I took the saucers off uh, uh, quite a while ago. But I drained them. Even this big elderberry bush. I just take it, lean it to the side, and drain that water. Okay? Now, the larger they are, the less you're going to have to give them a little water. Okay? So don't neglect them. Check and see if you need to water them. But on the days where it's raining a lot, drain them. Okay? I really, truly hope you enjoyed this video. You guys know that I love you and God loves you too. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.